In the light, it's a beautiful light. Come where the dewdrops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all the deep heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Blessed are they that dwell in the house. Lord, I love thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sings praises. Okay, I'm going to slip in a Christmas song here today. It's number 106. Oh, come on, be faithful. by the Spirit, and they're going to share with us. Now, there will be uh, fans if anybody needs them. We, we have an air conditioning system that's on the way. And I can easily say um, it's a supply chain problem. We can't get the parts. We ordered it, we planned it, uh, but they're going to come soon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move right along with the service so we can uh, complete it and then move on uh, to the back area where it's much cooler and there's food. Does that sound all right? Yeah. No problems with that? No problem. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks unto the Lord. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Eternal Heavenly Father, it's warm today, but we have 
a building that we can be in. Amen. It's warm today, Lord, but we got safety at home. We have something to eat. We have people who love us. And by God's grace, the weapons are outside. Lord, keep them outside. Keep this sanctuary sacred for your praise and for your worship, for your adulation and for your gospel. And then have mercy on those, Lord, who are doing nothing wrong and were attacked by madness. Lord, bless your people from madness. Give us the wherewithal. Give us your divine protection and give us your strength. And Lord, when they go low, let us go high in the Holy Spirit. When they have weapons of metal, let us use weapons of truth and justice. Bless us, Lord, that we may be seen as your children, that we may exhibit the fruits of the Spirit, peace and kindness and joy, long-suffering, grace, mercy. Let those be our weapons. And bless us in the battle. This is what we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hear our prayer, O Lord. O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. O Lord, incline thy ear to us and grant us thy peace. Just give me one more song. This one, I have two. <laughs> she will make you guys warm. So if you get too hot, you, you understand, don't you? It's, it's Susan's fault. Go ahead. Okay. 569, oh beautiful for spacious skies. 569. Oh beautiful for spacious skies, forever may sun rain. For purple mountains, majesty above the fruit in plain, America, America, God shed His grace on thee, and surrounded with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Oh, beautiful for Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye 
which are spiritual, restore such as one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou be tempted. Bear ye one another's burden, burdens, and so fulfill the law. For if a man think of himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Let us not be weary in doing well, for in due season we shall reap if we do not faint. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to move on with the service. Brother Bindow, announce yourself and your guests, and in the memory of your mom, uh, greet Old Chapel Abel Church. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you, uh, Pastor Robinson. My name is William Bindow. This is my friend, um, Pamela Swafford. Uh, we greet you from uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. I belong to uh, Grant Chapel and the church in Albuquerque. She belongs to Del Norte Baptist Church. We're very happy to be here. This is our, probably my second or third time visiting and pastoring here in Owen Chapel. And I always feel good to be here. You know, God is good and has allowed us you know, safe travels and hopefully safe travels back tomorrow. But uh, like I said, we're just very happy to be able to worship with you, to spend some time and eat some delicious food. Ooh, let the man preach. Beautiful. And we got good food. Yeah, I know you do. Amen. <laughs> thank you. Right, thank you, Pastor. This is going to be a relatively different Sunday. We're going to be uh, zooming to Ohio, where a colleague of mine, we were ordained together, uh, is going to be bringing part of the message. I don't like to preach today. It's Missionary Sunday. And the capable uh, women of this church now have a program which they're going to present to you. Is that okay? Amen. Then we'll get out of here and eat before too long. Melvin, you ready to sing? <laughs> I know I know you're ready to sing. Because <laughs> I got the microphone. I'll talk about you if you're done. Uh, they come all the way from Crucis uh, to, to uh, worship with us. And they are good AMEs, just like Brother Bendow. One of the reasons I was so happy to be in New Mexico it's because Rita Bendow was loving to everybody. Amen. She's loving to everybody. Whenever she, oh, Ben Robinson, hadn't seen me for months or year, but she had that love that she projected out and made a difference in, in people's lives. So whenever I see Bill, I'm always uh, thoughtful. He can't go too far from the tree that he came from. All right. Well spoken. Well. Faithful to his church, a good man in the community. He got that from his mama. Amen. And his daddy. <laughs> but he didn't think it robbery to come to Owen Chapel, even though we don't have air conditioning right now, to greet us. So thank you. Anytime you want to come, uh, the spirit of your family is a blessing to us all. Thank you. Any other announcements? Anything at all? Praise God. Praise God. That's a good announcement. So again, it's warm this morning. Uh, we're going to have the spoken word from speakers that are not me. And, and uh, Gabriella, uh, after the next election, what we'll do is we'll let you announce and we'll be on our way. Okay, Melvin. Come bless us with your Amen. praise. You don't need no mic. <laughs> we, need, we need it for our guests on Zoom. I just mess with you. I just mess with you. I know he was. Hello. Good morning. 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 beautiful faces. Hey, Amen. Hey, Out of all that's going on in the world, you know, <laughs> that's so great. We have time to be able to still show some happiness. Come on. Come on. We saw the news over, over the period of the week, of the entire week. We saw all of the deaths that have taken place. 
And it's, it's sometimes I just sit and wonder. I don't know about you, but Lord, why, Lord? Why mm. these things are happening? Mm. But I know that he knows and he has a reason for everything. Because his word says there's a time for everything. There's a season for everything. I may not be able to understand it and you may not be able to. But one of these old days we'll be able to understand. Oh, love. Mm -hmm. oh, love, Lord, you know that I'm your child, and I'm doing the best that I can, Lord. Why, 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 why my way? Why my way gets so hard, Lord? Lord, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm going to run on till I reach my heavenly home lord you know that i'm your child mm -hmm. and i'm doing the best that i can why my way lord gets so hard lord you know i don't understand oh lord oh lord I need you to hold my hand. I can't make it by myself. Oh Lord, oh Lord. I need you to hold my hand. Listen y'all. Mm -hmm. As I travel from place to place. Many times I'm treated so bad. Then I sit and think about I can't miss a friend that I never had Oh Lord, oh Lord I need you to hold my hands I can't make it by myself Oh Lord, oh Lord I need you to hold my hands I'm going to continue to run for Jesus. Even if I have to run alone, it's my determination to make God's beautiful heaven my home. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, I need you to hold my hand. I can't make it by myself, oh Lord, oh Lord, I need you to hold my hand. Let me say that again. I'm going to continue to run for Jesus, even if I have to run alone, it's my determination to make God's beautiful Heaven, my home, oh Lord, oh Lord, I need you to hold my hand. I can't make it by myself, oh Lord, oh Lord, I need you to hold my hand. Oh Lord, I need you to hold my hand. Hold me. Jesus, hold me, Jesus, hold me, hold me, Jesus, you don't hold me, Lord, I will surely fall, yeah, Lord, hold me, mm -hmm. Jesus, Lord, hold me, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Lord, hold me, Lord, hold me, yeah, yeah, Lord, yeah. 
Put your loving arms around me, yeah. I know if you hold me, Lord, hold me. Come on, cry up me, yeah, yeah. Jesus, mm, Lord, Lord, hold me, Lord, hold me. Lord, hold me. Yeah, yeah, Lord. Lord, hold me, yeah. Lord, hold me, hold me, Lord. You don't hold me. Mm -hmm. I know I will fall, yeah, yeah. Hold me, mm -hmm. Jesus. Hold me, hold me, mm -hmm. Jesus. Hold me, hold me, Jesus. Lord, you know. That I'm your child And I'm doing the best that I can Why my way, Lord, gets so hard Lord, you know I don't understand Oh, Lord, oh, Lord I need you to hold my that's your gift from Las Cruces this morning. Amen. This is Gratitude Month. Um, I have so much to be grateful for. I have friends. I have uh, faithful church members. I got good food in the back. I got a nice garden. I got so many things to be grateful for. Uh, God and authority on your side. Always. Jesus. I don't have a weapon, but I got nope. God on <laughs> my side. That's the best weapon of all. It is the best weapon. Yes, yeah. it sure is. And we learned today, if you depend on the Holy Spirit, you'll be all right. Speaking. You'll be all right. Not weapons, nope. but the Word of God. Now, there's a lady who I, again, was ordained with. Her name is Reverend Peggy Hayes. And uh, we work together in Ohio, and we're in a church. But we've been friends ever since. And so she wants to just share a gratitude with you this morning, all the way from Ohio. Is that all right? All right. Uh, Reverend Hayes, you available? Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes, I am. Would you share your gratitude? Uh -huh. Good morning, church. What I would like to share today for gratitude, I was speaking earlier with Darlene and telling her what a blessing I've had this year, and she suggested that I share it with you all. Um, when I was um, in second grade, I had a teacher who would put me out in the hallway to tutor another student. And fast forward to my career in college, I wanted to be uh, in the medical field, but I couldn't do the math to do the medicine. And so the one thing I knew that I could do was teach reading, and I went into education. And my first year of teaching, I decided to go back to my home state of Florida and thank my second grade teacher for having a backup plan um, that I didn't would have been in trouble if I if I had gotten to my sophomore sophomore year and didn't know what to do, but I did because of her. And she was gone. I couldn't find her. Nobody knew where she was. And I set up a prayer. I said, Lord, please let me find this woman before I die so I can thank her because every important thing in my life has come from my years of education. And so I said that prayer in 1976, and this past December, one of my second grade classmates posted online that she had gotten a letter from Miss Betty. And it turns out that even though I'm 70, Miss Betty is still above ground, and <laughs> all these years, 46 years, for a prayer to come to fruition, but God is faithful, and I am so, so grateful that we are back in each other's lives and creating a whole new relationship as adults. So I just wanted to share that with you guys this morning. Prayers don't always come right on time when we think they're supposed to be there. 
but God always makes sure that there's an answer eventually. So thank you for letting me share. Amen. Without gratitude, you don't realize how blessed you are. Mm -hmm. You take things for granted. Mm -hmm. Had someone tell me the other day, you know, most of my life I, I was selfish. And, and the person said, but I'm over that now. We still have some ways to go. But thank God that he gives us second chances. He forgives us. He has grace and mercy. Guess what he wants us to do? Have grace and mercy for others. And forgive others. Amen. Amen. That's what Jesus did. Is it always easy? No. No, no. But we have the tools that we can use. Anyone else want to share just a brief gratitude? Anything. Susie. I'd just like to say thank you that I've been here for six years and I've never really worked in an African American church or AME before I came here. And I have had more fun loving everybody and getting to know everybody. I'm so privileged. My family's privileged. My friends are privileged. Um, my testimony um, about God. And I just want to lift you guys up and tell you how much as an African American church, you are so beautiful to me, so unique, and I'm so happy to be here with my mom. I love you guys so much. Always, always. Thank you. Thank you. Denisha. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. I want you to teach my kids and give me my yeah. <laughs> I'm getting old. How did I? We get better. Uh, <laughs> uh, I am grateful. I am grateful for all things. I am grateful that God has waited for us to get us where we need to be. Come on. To see him and for us to be used by him. I am grateful that we're here to get together as one, as he wants, one harmony, one spirit, one mind, one love. So I am grateful and I'm thankful, hallelujah, amen, that we can go out and show his love his glory and his praise and the things that he has done for each and every last one of us. So that's all I want to share. Thank you so much. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So you see that the Holy Spirit and the women have taken over this morning. So I'm going to sit down <laughs> and let the Holy Spirit and the women of the church have the remainder of the program. Gabriel? Amen. Good morning, Arlington Chapel. Good morning. Good morning. Well, today we have Missionary Sunday, which is May 29, 2022, and it's the Women of the Bible, the Believer's Perspective. And um, we're going to continue this. This isn't going to be just this one time, because there's so many different women of the Bible, in the Bible. And I'll just read off to you who's going to speak today and some of the women that are going to be um, talked about. Um, Reverend Peggy Hayes, who you see on our screen here, she's going to be talking about um, Ruth and Rahab. And then this is Sister Darlene Bassett, she's going to speak about Deborah and Jael. 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 And then um, right now, um, we're going to have Sister Susan Suzanne Fuller speak about Zephora. Zephora. Okay. And then Sister Susan Kaufman is going to speak about Mary Magdalene. Oh, okay. So um, those are the speakers we're going to have today. And well, as I said, we're going to continue this on. Um, next time we'll have Elizabeth as part of the, the lineup as, of women from the Bible. Okay, thank you so much. Um, please listen to Reverend Peggy Hayes uh, and her, her speech about Ruth and Rahab. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to share with you a little bit about the mission of the AME Church is to minister to the social, spiritual, and physical development of all people. And part of that is the missionary service. Webster defines missionary as a person sent on a religious mission, especially one sent to promote Christianity in a foreign country. This morning, I'm going to share with you the lives of two women who I think are remarkable. That is Ruth and Rahab. Both of these women spent time dwelling in foreign lands among foreign people. And believe it or not, even though they are from the 
Old Testament, they were on a mission of ministry of Jesus Christ. Ruth first shows up in the Old Testament and has a book entirely devoted just to her. When the story opens, there's famine in the land, her family is starving, and, and what we find is that living in Bethlehem is Elimelech, his wife Naomi, and sons Mahon and Kilion. And they go to the refuge in Moab where there is food. Elimelech dies. That's leaving Ruth to be support, or Naomi, I'm sorry, Naomi to be supported by her two sons. The sons take wives, but ten years into their marriages, the sons also die. That leaves Naomi by herself. It leaves daughter-in-law Ruth with her, and daughter-in-law Martha. Those three women are alone in the country with no male support. That spells disaster for them. And so without male benefactors, they have, they have no way to survive. So Naomi decides that she will go back to her people and prepares to leave Moab. She tells her daughter-in-laws, you girls stay here, go back to your families, find husbands, and you will be fine. I'm too old to get another husband, so I will go back to the land of my people. Oprah says, okay, I love you, but I'm, I'm going to stay here. Ruth, on the other hand, says, no, 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 I will not leave you. We're all familiar with the verse from Ruth 1, 16 to 17. Entreat me not to leave thee, nor to refrain from following thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I shall lodge. Thy people shall be my people, thy God shall be my God. For thou diest, I shall die, and there will I be buried. Let the Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death separate me from thee. At this point, Ruth, a Moabite, an idol worshiper, a pagan, declares not only her intent to stay with her mother-in-law and her integrity in that matter, but she also declares that the God of Israel is her God. So she's gone from pagan to worshiping the God of Israel. So the woman, the women go back to Naomi's native Bethlehem, and they survive by Ruth going out into the fields and picking up the leftover grain that the reapers haven't bothered to gather. And as the story goes, Boaz, the owner of the field, sees her, finds faith, she finds favor with him. He marries her, and Ruth goes from being the very bottom of the ladder, picking up the leavings, to the very top of the ladder. She is the landowner's wife. So she's moved from the very bottom to the very top. She's moved from pagan to following the one true God. We assume their story ends here, but it doesn't. I'll tell you in a moment what happens. The next woman I'd like to share with you is the story of Rahab. Rahab is found in, her story is found in the book of Joshua. In verse 1 of Joshua, we learn that Moses has died, and God has turned over the leadership to Joshua, who was Moses' aide. And Joshua is now charged with leading the people into the promised land. So Joshua gets together the army. They leave the women where they are as far as they've come to the edge of the Jordan River, and the army is going to go across to conquer the, the uh, promised land, to get into the land. Joshua sends some spies out of the land to see what they're up against, and one of the towns that they go into is Jericho. And Jericho is a heavily walled city, and what you have to understand about the walled cities, most of them had two walls. There was an outer wall, to keep out invaders, and then there was an inner wall where the wealthy and the prominent lived. In between those two walls is where everybody else lived. The common people lived in between the walls. And, and Rahab was a Canaanite woman. She was also um, a harlot, is what the Bible calls her. So she lived between those two walls, between the two walls. She didn't live in the inner city. She didn't live where the rich people were or the powerful people were. She lived in between the inner and outer walls. 
Although she was on the margin of society, she was a wise woman, and she, because of her profession, knew a lot more than many of the other people um, in the city. She had people of distinction who uh, spent time with her, shall we say. So she knew that well, the leaders of the city were really concerned about the Israelites coming because they heard of the miracles. They heard of the miracle of the Red Sea. They heard of other conquerings. And so the leadership was really nervous about uh, what was going to happen, and she was well aware of this. So Joshua sends out his two spies, and they end up um, at Rahab's dwelling. And she tells them that everybody's really concerned, and we, we fear for uh, what you all are going to do, because we have already heard it said that you will conquer. Fast forward just a little bit, and the king of Jericho hears that the two spies are in town, and he comes to Rahab's house, sends men to Rahab's house to find them. Rahab hides the spies on top of the roof underneath recently harvested crops that are up there to dry. The army doesn't think to go upstairs and look. They look around. Nobody's there. Rahab says they've gone. They, they've already left the city. City gates have been closed. You better go after them if you're going to catch up with them. So the army takes off, goes hunting for the spies who then escape from Rahab's house. They go out a window, down a rope escape to safety. When Rahab talks to them and says, this is how you can escape. I've saved you once, now here's the next escape route. She also says, and since I've helped you, I think you should help me. Well. The spies agree that they can save her family, including her in-laws, her aunts, her uncles, her children, all of her servants, anyone that is associated with her who comes to stay in her house that they will save when they come to attack the city. Wow. And they tell her to put a red cord out the window so when the city is destroyed, as dictated by God, who said every living thing is to be destroyed, not just conquered, but destroyed. Rahab's family was safe and secure because she had helped the spies. She had also proclaimed, I know that your God is the God of all things, the God of heaven and the right. God of earth. So here we have again a woman who was a pagan worshiper who has heard the news of the God of Israel and acknowledges that God and is saved. But her story doesn't end here either. In the New Testament, in the first chapter of the book of Matthew, we have an accounting of the generations of Christ. And he goes, this will begat, 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 begat. I'm sure you've all been familiar with that. But in verse 5, we have some special information. And Salmon begat Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Right? Mm -hmm. And Boaz begat Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Mm -hmm. right? And then it continues to lead on down to Jesus Christ. So here in the New Testament, it is revealed that Rahab, mm -hmm. the Canaanite harlot, mm -hmm. has married Salmon of the tribe of Judah and birth Boaz, and Boaz grows up to marry Ruth the Moabite. Two pagan women right. who proclaim the omnipotence of the one God of Israel are redeemed by him and folded into the tapestry of the lineage of Jesus, not just into becoming Jewish and part of the chosen people, but actually into the biological lineage right. of the Messiah. Right. Because of their stories, we know for certain that there is no, no sin history too great, there's no circumstance too impossible, and no distance too far from God that we too cannot be redeemed. That's right. That's right. right. Amen. 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 Holy Spirit told me to speak on Rahab, and then I started studying and realized the connection that I'd never seen before between Rahab and Ruth. So I am I'm so thankful that that was brought to my mind, and I hope that blesses you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to take her picture.
picture off the big TV, but she'll still be with us listening to the rest of the program. Hello. Hello. Our next speaker is Darlene Bassett. She'll speak about Deborah and JL. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Gaby told me to speak up. <laughs> the story that I'm about to tell you is 3,000 years old. It happened in, a, in an area of desert that we now know as the Middle East. It's a story of a woman named Jael, J-A-E-L, as recorded in the book of Judges of the Old Testament. Now the name JL literally means mountain goat. Spiritually, it means one who ascends, one who climbs. JL was a, a Bedouin, a desert dweller. She was a member of the Kenite tribe, a nomadic people who herded sheep and goats and moved frequently in search of new grazing territory for their herds. As a woman in this culture, JL was responsible for pitching the tent and taking down the family tent. That's part of the job of the women. She was married to a man named Heber, who was a descendant of Jethro, the father-in-law of Moses. Before God sent Moses to the Pharaoh, to say, set my people free, Moses lived in the desert with the Kenites for 40 years and married Jethro's daughter. So the Kenites and the Israelites were connected. The Kenites are believed to be the original worshipers of a god named Yahweh, the god of Abraham, the one god. They weren't Hebrews, they weren't God's chosen people but they were closely connected and allies of the Israelites in a world where there were many warring tribes at that time. Now, JL's story involves three of those tribes, the Kenites, the Israelites, and the Canaanites. The Israelites had a long history of dysfunction. They went through cycles. They would fall into sin and idolatry and disobedience. So God would deliver them into the hands of one of their enemies for a period of time. And then when they had a, enough oppression, they would cry out to God and God would come and rescue them by sending them a savior at this period of time, a leader. And this was before kings uh, ruled Israelites. So they were judges. JL's story takes place after God had turned the Israelites over to the Canaanites, who were ruled by King Jabin, who had a great army of 900 chariots, led by a vicious commander named Sisera, who oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. But after they came to their senses, were back in their cycle, oh God, rescue us, please, from these oppressive enemies. God called on a new judge, the fourth judge of Israel, named Deborah, right. and the only woman judge. That's right. And why? Because she was a righteous woman. Ooh. During a time when the people had been living in sin and idolatry and disobedience, Deborah was faithful to God. So God put her in the position of leadership. So God told her to prepare for battle. So she called to her a man named Barak and told him, gather 10,000 troops, we're going to battle. And have faith, don't worry, because God will go before you. 
to lead the Israelites into victory over the Canaanites. So Barak said, well, all right, if you'll go with me. But if you don't go, I'm not going to go. Now, why would he want the judge? Why would he want Deborah to go with him? Because he knew of her close relationship Ooh, to God. Speak it, speak it. So she said, okay, I will go with you. But know this, the victory will not be yours mm. because you did not answer God's call. Mm. You, were, you were doubtful. Mm. Right. You right. had unbelief. Because of your unbelief, this victory will be delivered into the hands of a woman. Now, Deborah was a prophet. She was. So this is what happened. I'm reading from the book of Judges, chapter 4. When Barak attacked, the Lord threw Sisera and all his chariots into panic. Sisera leapt down from his chariot and escaped on foot. Then Barak chased the chariots and the enemy army all the way to Heroseth Haganeum. Forgive my mispronunciation killing all of Sisera's warriors. Not a single one was left. Meanwhile, Sisera ran to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, because Heber's family was on friendly terms 